757 could have been flying at the speed that the 9-11 commission came up with because it's 110 knots over the maximum operating limit for that aircraft. So that was just another little interesting fact that I picked up. Yep, I agree. Uh, there was Pilots for 9-11 Truth did a lot of really good analysis. Uh, there's one other piece that I wanted to share with you. It had to do with the altitude because – they were given data. They used the Freedom of Information Act to get the flight recorder data from the NTSB. So they received this uh, Excel file in uh, CSV, comma separated value format, and they did analysis on this file. And what they found out was, even though the angle that that was reported by – it matches the angle that the 9-11 Commission reported. However, they didn't get the altitude right. They said the data that they were provided would have shown that the altitude was at least 300 feet too high to have struck any of the light poles, and the altitude would have been at least 100 – too high to have struck any part of the Pentagon, let alone the bottom floor. The data provided was obviously rigged, but the people who provided it weren't smart enough to cover all of the different data values that are, that are included in, in one of those files. Right. My biggest still question to this day is uh, what ha what about the wreckage that should be there from the plane and or all the luggage that was on that plane or e even as far as uh, it's not even your normal picture as far as any plane wreckage that was in that front lawn at the Pentagon that day. Um, what, how can they explain that away? Well, that's a good question, and that actually uh, one of the sites says that's their number one question. People say, well, if, if the plane didn't hit the Pentagon, where's the plane, right? Yeah, um, exactly. I didn't have time to do a lot of research on that, but I did find a little bit just briefly, and I have not written about it. But uh, one of the things that I found, and this is going to sound far-fetched, and that's one of the reasons I didn't uh, include it. Um, one of the, I guess, uh, Ted Olson, his wife, what was, what was her name? The one phone call. Barbara. Was, her name was Barbara. Barbara Olson. There is at least one website who asked that same question, what happened to the uh, – and maybe I'll put it as a footnote or, or as, a, as a additional references at the end here, and I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it justice. But basically, they found a woman somewhere in the U.S. who looks identical to Barbara Olson, who is also a an attorney like she was. They actually superimposed the images of her face. Basically, they were coming to the conclusion that these people uh, were – given different identities. There's also evidence that at least seven, if not more, of these supposed hijackers are alive and well in different areas of the world. Well, the uh, other um, interesting coincidences surrounding Barbara Olson was supposedly she was one of the, um, I think she was maybe the only one or one of the very few people that were on that plane, supposedly, that was able to make a cell phone call to her husband, yeah. you know, I and she right. was the one that she was the one that said there are Arab hijackers on the plane and they have box cutters, but yet he changed his story several times. First, he said he received that that phone call on a cell phone. Then he said he um, received that on a rear uh, mounted on the back of the seat air phone, you know, at a later interview, and then an FBI professional came forward and said that he received the phone call on a cell phone, but the duration of the call was zero seconds. Yep, so I read all those things. Yeah, things. how would she have had the time to say anything about a hijacker, you know, in zero seconds? So, yeah, very interesting coincidences there, don't you think? Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> my my report's already over 20 pages long, so I, I have to cut it off somewhere. I mean, I could spend – the next six months writing about this, but uh, I right. have to get it out today. <laughs> Welcome to Revolution Radio. We are 100% listener supported. We have an awesome group in chat with lots of info. You can join with Java or Flash. We are. Uh, you can join us at www.freedomslips.com, or you can visit some of us at www.thecontrail.com. And again, thanks for listening. Right. One of the interesting things that I find, you know, I've, there's a lot of information that's been around for a long time, 
and it's been regurgitated, regurgitated. And it's all good information, all awesome investigation by so many tens of thousands of people all over the planet trying to reveal the truth here. And uh, actually, I'd like to address that here in just a second. But what I like about the things that I've really keyed my article on is this 9-11, uh, the blueprint for, for truth, and this other video that I was talking about, about the Pentagon, are fairly recent videos. That is, they both come out within the last year. Uh, and they're both really, really quite excellent. I want to share just one little thing to you. I'm trying to motivate people to read this article from the, at the very beginning. And I, first of all, I have a, a quote that I'd like to share from, with you. Uh, this is from Max Cleland, who was one of the 9-11 Commission members, okay? He said, the Commission had to, had to subpoena the FAA for documents, had to subpoena NORAD for documents, because they wouldn't give them to them when they asked, and they will never get the full story. That is one of the tragedies. One of these days we will have to get the full story because 9-11 issue is so important to the American people. But this White House wants to cover this up, okay? And that's one of the commission members. Wow. And here's, 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 here's how my um, article begins. As we approach the 10-year anniversary of uh, September 11, 2011 tragedy, one, one thing that we can be certain of is that we have not been told the truth regarding the events that transpired on that fateful day. Many of the 9-11 Commission members who authored the official 9-11 Commission report have admitted as such, in addition to the above statement by Max Cleland about the White House government cover-up, Commission members have revealed that they were set up to fail, they were only given a very short amount of time and a very little about a little money, that the, the, the CIA obstructed their investigation, they, they refused to give them information that they asked for, the statements made by the NORAD officials were just so far from the truth, the C, uh, um, and, and that they were extremely frustrated with all the false statements we were getting, and finally, by the uh, co-commissioner of the 9-11 um, Commission, uh, Mr. Hamilton, who said, we don't believe for a minute that we got everything right. So that's all admitting, that's, that's stuff that was just admitted by the people who were involved with the 9-11 Commission report. Uh, wow. So. You know, I had a quote from Janice Kephart, who was also part of that 9-11 uh, Commission. And her quote was, and she stated pretty much the same things that you just did, you know, mm -hmm. but she added her own statement at the end and said it's all about the protection of the institution in the end. When yes. she was asked, asked, you know, why all this stuff was done, and that was her quote. I, that, that, to me, was very telling. <laughs> very. So here's my little hook at the beginning to try to get people to read this thing, because as you and I know, you know, the three of us can talk about this, but if we breach this subject with one of our friends or, or, or coworkers or family members, you know, they just turn a deaf ear, they roll their eyes, they don't want to hear, we're a bunch of conspiracy nuts. And I want to read you just one, a little bit more here. This, is, this section is called Blind Belief in Authority, and it starts out with a, a quote from Albert Einstein. Blind belief in authority is the greatest enemy of the truth. Blind belief in authority is the greatest enemy of the truth. And so I say for, uh, for many, doubts still remain about the accuracy of the official report of 9-11 regarding what happened and who was responsible. In a recent poll, and these, these polls each came out within the last six months, in a recent poll, nearly half of the New Yorkers uh, support a new investigation into the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, and another recent poll indicated that 15 percent, that's one in seven Americans, believe that the U.S. government staged the attacks. So there's a lot of people who don't believe it, yet for many others, the suggestion that the U.S. government orchestrated the attacks is both ridiculous and repugnant, which is understandable. You know, they, they just don't believe it. They don't want to hear about it, and, and, and they think it's just ridiculous, and if you talk about it, you're, you're slamming our government that we so much love. Yeah. What, is not under, what is not understandable is that so many people blindly believe the official story, uh, the official reports, and refuse to entertain the possibility that they may have been lied to. 
Instead, they turn a deaf ear to and often ridicule the many thousands of highly intelligent people who have been trying for years to wake them up to the truth. People like scholars for 9-11 Truth, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, pilots for 9-11 Truth, political leaders for 9-11 Truth, medical professionals for 9-11 Truth, military and intelligent and government patriots for 9-11 Truth, and many, many other credible people. This report is for those of you who either believe the official story or aren't sure what to believe or doesn't uh, think it matters what you believe. So anyway, that's how my article starts out. Wow, that's perfect. Well, it looks like we're getting close to wrapping up here, Ross, and I would strongly encourage everybody to head on over to aircraft.org and check out the rest of that article. And um, is there anything you'd like to say in closing, Kat? No, um, I appreciate uh, you coming on and uh, carrying on this conversation with us, Ross. Yeah, thank you pleasure. so much for being on the show. You are a pleasure, and and if we can, sometime in the future, we'd like to get you back. Definitely, definitely. I love to, love to. In the light of so many unanswered questions from so many people around the world, I would like to take a moment to have a a bit of silence for those closely involved and who have lost family and friends in some of these horrific events. Peace and blessings to you all. Thank you. You are listening to Revolution Radio. We are 100% listener supported. Um, We have archives and lots of information on the site. You can join us at www.freedomslips.com. There is an online radio on there that you can listen to the show. There's an awesome group in chat. You can either go through it as Java or Flash. Um, You can also visit some of us at www.thecontrail.com. And please feel free to make any donation if you could. It would be like a simple cup of coffee with your morning paper. Um, And again, thanks for listening.